what are we doing currently here is we are getting the data and we are storing in this uh, collection and we are processing the data so we have just seen how to use q concept now let us go ahead and implement the same concept here so what is our first step to process the data from q first we are supposed to create the q where are we going to create the q we will go to system tab okay now let us go to our queues okay and create a new queue here okay i'm going to create a new queue new and name it as centrix data solution queue just name it as centrix data solution queue let me copy this name okay now let us click on apply i'm going to apply here i'm going to create the queue this is how we are going to create the queue so let's go to system tab under workflow under queues work queues you will be able to add new queue if you want to delete the queue also we can select that queue and delete the queue okay now we have added the queue come to control room and uh, select the queue which we have created so this is the queue which we have created centris data solution queue now we can see we don't have any data in our centris data solution queue okay no data data is empty you can refresh and see now once the queue is created now let us go back to our process so guys uh, let us not disturb this flow so what i'm going to do here is i am going to another process by clicking on save as save as i am going to create a same process a copy of the same process i am going to take a copy of the same process so in case in future if you want to understand how this is going to run and all it will be easy for you okay file save as i am going to click save as i am going to select the same folder here cds implementing with q create order with q okay with the uh, uh, okay q next <clears throat> okay so we have saved it now you can find two processes here in the studio you can see two processes so this is our actual process right this is our actual process where we have executed so far so till here i'm not going to disturb this process anymore i'm going to leave it like that because in this we have the complete flow where we are getting the data from the excel file how we are iterating through the collection and all is available here close this now i have created a new process guys in real time you are not supposed to do like that okay in real time you are not supposed to do like that because in real time everything should be in a same process okay why i am doing it here in separate way because if i want to share this with you it will be easy for me if i share it with you right in in future for your reference it will be helpful for you to go through all the processes which we have designed okay whatever i am going to teach you here right everything i will generate a release file i will share all these processes with you so that it will be easy for you to uh work on them or in case if you are running into any issue you can come back to our process and see how we have designed it okay so that is the purpose i have created a separate process here okay now in this process let us go ahead and implement the queue concept now we have already created the queue here right so what is our queue name let us take a data item open the data item make it as text data type queue just name it as queue this is our queue name this is our queue name okay now what are we going to do what is our next step let us add a new page here instead of putting the whole thing in a same flow 
so in our previous process what we have designed so here we are loading the data to the queue and getting the next item everything we are doing it in the same page in the main page itself but now let us define it in a separate page let us define it in a separate page okay i'm going to create a new page name the page as new page name the page as load to queue load data to queue okay loading the data to the queue so how are you going to load the data to the queue let us see what is the first action to load the data to the queue what will be the first action to load the data to the queue which object we are supposed to choose we are supposed to choose internal business objects for queue inside that we are going to use add to queue now let us pass queue name here okay so let us expose the data items here queue data item let us expose this data item open this product data also yeah we have already exposed to this one from here go to add to queue drag and drop the queue name here drag and drop the queue name as the input and which collection we are planning to add to the queue product data collection from here only we are going to get the data right so this is the place from where we are going to get the data hmm. now let us come back to load to queue so now we are going to add the data to the queue so before we add the data to the queue let us identify the unique column in the what will be the unique column in, in our data census data solution orders excel file orders excel file <coughs> Mm, let us uh, it is a duplicate record let me delete this one record i have deleted total will be having 20 records now okay so what is the unique column here which column value will be unique all the time so we know that customer account number column is unique because each customer will have his own unique id okay now save the excel file close it so what is our uh, <clears throat> column unique column customer account number okay now close the excel file come back customer account number is the unique column so what are we supposed to do go to system tab go to system tab come to work queue select your queue select your queue and name it as customer account number guys naming convention should be same as how you are going to get the data in this uh, collection so it should be same okay it should be same apply click on apply any changes you do here don't forget to click on apply come back to your process come back to your process so now let us get the data first into the collection product data collection i'm going to put a breakpoint over here you can observe it's going to get the data from the excel file after creating the instance taking some time just give it some time yeah let's create the instance so now coming back to the main page now we have got the data here in the product code collection product data collection and you can see uh, customer account number what is the column name customer account number it should be same whatever the column name you have in this collection because this is the collection which we are going to add to the queue 
add to the queue. We are using this collection to add the data to the queue, right? We are passing here. Which collection we are passing? We are passing product data. So same way here also. When you define the customer account number, it should be same naming convention. Okay. I mean, select there should not be any case changes also. Like this should not be in small case and all. Okay. Make sure you are following proper naming convention here, and also you are uh, providing the uh, spaces also as it is. Okay. Now come back here to our process. Let me close this process. Come back to our process. So now, first of all, we are going to load the data to the queue. So when are we supposed to load the data to the queue? We are supposed to load the data to the queue after getting the data from the queue. Sorry, after getting the data from the Excel. We get the data from the Excel and we load the data into the queue. Now come back to the main page. Take the reference here. Which page we are supposed to call load data to queue page. I'm going to call load data to queue page because I want to load the data into the queue. Now link these stages here. Come back here. So just check if you have defined the required inputs to this stage or not. Yes, queue name is defined and uh, product data is defined there. Now come back to the main page. Now set this as your next stage. So okay, not that one, this one. We are going to execute this stage. Okay. Or reset the flow. Let us run it from first. Okay. So we can't add empty collection to the queue. So that's the reason. First thing is we are get we are going to get the data from the Excel file and then we are going to load that data into the queue. Okay. Now let me run this flow. You can see it is now going to get the data from the Excel workbook and then it is going to add the data into the queue. It is now going to add the queue. So once the data is added to the queue, let us see if we have the data here or not. In the queue, let us go to control room. Go to control room. Select our queue here. Set it data solution queue. You can see we have loaded all 20 records into the queue, right? All the records into the queue. We loaded all the records into the queue. Yes or no? Perfect, right? So now we have all the data in the queue. Now we are going to process these records. Now we are going to process these records. So go. Once we load the data into the queue, okay. Now, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to process the data from the queue. So, what I'm going to do is come back to the process. Now, start the process. If you want to start the process, you need to have the data. Yes, sir. Right? So, we will start the process. We will click on the order stage, see what is going to happen. We are logging in into the application first. And then uh, I'm going to click on order tab. So you can see in the application order page is loaded. Now the same concept which we have seen before. Are we going to process the data through the collection? Do we require this collection? Yes, no. Can someone answer? Do we require this collection? We don't require this collection because we have loaded the data to the queue, right? Now we are going to process data from the queue. Okay, so we are no more going to use this loop stage here because we are not going to process the data from the collection. Now I am going to delete this loop stage. Okay, set this as my next stage and then delete this loop stage. Okay, I'm going to delete the loop. Then how are we going to process the data? From where are we going to get the data now? Now I am going to take a new action. Select internal business objects work queues. And inside that we will be having an action called get next item. 
we have already seen the advantages of the get next item right coming back to the process open this now define the properties here what are the inputs so we from which queue we are supposed to get the data this is the queue from here we are going to get the data okay and what are the outputs we are going to get item item data name it as item data i'm going to create this also okay now click on so now we have item data and uh, item id as our output so we are going to define the same way what we have done so far we are going to get the get next item from the queue after that i am going to take a decision stage i am going to check if item id is available or not so that i am going to make sure if there is going to be any value in the queue okay after processing all the records we are supposed to make sure every time if item id is available in the queue or not is there no any more records or not okay item id give the proper name item id exists so if the item id exists then i am going to proceed to create the order so what am i going to do get next item i am going to check if item id is existing or not once item id is available then i will go ahead and create the new order so if not available then what am i supposed to do i am supposed to terminate the application and update the data to the excel file okay now after creating the order for the first record what is our next step will be next we are going to mark the record as completed yes sir we are immediately supposed to mark the record as completed after creating the record i mean creating the order for the first record so for that select or use and then choose mark completed action here and pass item id to this input i mean input will be item id here click okay now link to this stage here and after marking the record as completed now i'm going to get the next item are we supposed to do that uh, new collection also we need to take a new collection and define it in that collection yes or no is that required here Can someone answer the question? Is that required here? Yes or no? so yeah and anyone yeah okay so now what are we going to design here is now we are again going to take a new collection here so once we store the data in this item data and values now again we are supposed to store that in a separate collection to update the reference numbers okay 
Now take a multi calculation stage and then take a new collection. Same concept which we have done before collection and a multi calculation stage. Depend the fields first. Reference number data with all the fields. So first thing is customer account number and then product code and then unit price and then uh, quantity priority order reference number so this is the collection which we are supposed to update it back to the excel file everything has text here because the input data that we are going to receive in product data collection will be text data type as it is an undefined collection every field will be in text data type in this collection you can see here the current values in this collection are in text data type see every data type is text here yes or no so that is the reason throughout the flow we are going to maintain it as text and data type if you want to do any numeric actions on any of these functions what are you going to do on any of these values if you want to perform numeric uh, actions numeric uh, functions execute numeric functions on any of these uh, values what are we going to do we are going to convert we say to number okay we are going to convert it and then do it okay in case if you want to do any numeric operations okay now once we define the collection the data will be empty in this collection so what are we supposed to do we are now going to add a new row to this collection how open this add a new row to add a new row we are supposed to choose internal business object collections because we are working on collections right we are trying to manipulate collections So to which collection we are planning to add a row in double quotes or the reference number data is our collection final collection to which we are going to add a row add row and then we are going to allocate data to reference number collection customer account number uh, priority order anything product code unit price i mean it can be any order it's not mandatory that you need to give in a proper order at all so now here also what i do i'll pass same values and simply change the name of the collection from which we are going to refer them okay oh, sorry did a mistake here sorry not for unit price quantity priority order and then we have the reference number okay so what is this uh, where is the name it as uh, uh, collection uh yeah set data to final collection this will be our final collection okay we are setting the data to the final collection okay and when are we supposed to set the data after creating the order we will first add an zero and then we will set the data okay this is how it should happen i'm going to design it So after creating the order, add an empty row to the collection, set the data, and then mark it as completed. Yeah. 
Is that clear? Okay, and mark it as completed. Any questions so far? Do you have any questions? Anyone have any questions so far? Now let us uh, reset everything. Let us run from first. Okay. Let us run from first. So before I go ahead and run it, let me delete the data from the queue. Okay. Is it really required to delete the data from the queue all the time? Can't we define anything different here? So when you rerun the flow, what is going to happen when if you start the process once again, it will simply load the data into the queue again. Okay. It will simply load the data into the queue again. Okay. So I don't want to load the data to the queue if there are pending records in the queue. Only when there is no pending records, then I am supposed to load the data to the queue. Okay. Perfect, right? So what are we supposed to do in this scenario? So now I'm going to introduce one more action stage here. Let us take an action stage, open the action stage. Create a new page. Check if you Uh, does data exist in queue? Okay, we are going to create a new page. Uh, guys, am I audible now? I have seen that my connection has been lost. Am I audible now? Oh, perfect. So why am I doing this page? Why am I doing this? Because if you run this page now, the data will be loaded again into the queue. I don't want to load the data repeatedly in the queue. Okay. So for that reason, I'm coming here. I'm going to get the pending items from the queue. What are all the pending items? So I'm going to check if there are any pending items in the queue or not. How I'm going to check? I'm going to send the queue name here. I'm going to send the queue name here. I'm going for the output i'm going to create the pending items collection here now here i'll be getting the pending items oh i'll get the list of pending items in the queue now see this i'm going to execute this set next stage execute execute see how many items i have it will just give me the output item id server it will not give me all the Items, I will not get the data here. We'll just get the item IDs. So how many records are in pending status? 
all the records will be all the item ids of those records which are in pending status will be extracted here okay now we have the records in the queue which are in pending status okay so now what i do i will take one more action stage open the action stage now i will count how many records are there collections count rows there is action called count rows pass the name of the collection from which we are planning to count the rows pending items is the collection in which we are planning to count the rows now we are going to get the pending item count so what is the pending item count this will be our pending item count okay now expose this data item because we are in the main page for play okay now if you see here set this as my next stage once again run it run it you can see we got 20 records now we are going to count the rows count the rows you can see we got the count of the rows how many are there in that collection okay so now we are able to get the pending items from the queue and now we are able to get the records from the queue okay and we are able to count the number of rows in the queue so number of rows in this collection how to count the number of rows in the collection you are supposed to use collection internal business object collection and then pass the name of the collection in which you are planning to count the rows and, and the output okay now come back to the main page in the main page refer again i'm going to refer the page does data exist in the queue so before i lay the data into the queue or before i start the process immediately after the start first i am going to check does data exist in the queue okay or just name it as yes pending item count rename the stage as get pending item count we are going to get the pending item from here right get pending item count so once you get the pending item count I will take a decision stage. Here I am going to check a pending item count is greater than zero or not. If the pending item count is greater than zero or not, check if items are pending. Okay. If yes, if I have pending items, what am I supposed to do? I will immediately start the application. I will immediately start the application. If no, then I am going to get the data from the Excel file and then continue load the data into the queue and then start the application. Okay, I have redesigned it. So first, what am I doing here? First, I am going to get the pending item count from the queue and then I am going to check if there are any pending items. If there are pending items, I will continue with those items. I will start creating orders from those items. Okay. Now, if there are no more pending items, then I am going to get the data from the Excel file. Clear this and then I mean, load the data should.
item data and Okay. Now see if we have pending items in the queue, how this is going to execute. Now I'm going to start the flow. Let us do step by step. Set next stage. Step. 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 We're going to get the pending items. We got the pending items and now we are going to count the pending items and once we execute that step now we are going to check if the item count is greater than zero or not if, if it is greater than zero, to continue with starting the application and getting the next step. Now let us do step by step Let me minimize this one so that we can see the application also to the left side. One side you able to see the application, and the other side you'll be able to see the process here. We have the collections here. Okay, now so we went to the orders page. Now we're going to I mean, uh, uh, if you see here, now these two data items are empty. Okay. Now, what item? You can see there is a value in this item data collection. We have the value in this item data collection. Yes or no? Now, go to your queue and check if that record is moved to pending status or not. You can see that currently the record is moved to pending status. The record is moved to pending status here. Okay. After moving the record to the pending status, now let us go back here. Ah. Item ID exists, then create new order. Now we are going to create the new order. So while creating the new order, if you remember, from where are we supposed to pass the data? Which collection? Item data, right? But what are we doing here? We are trying to pass the data from the product data collection only. So, what is the collection name here? Item data. Similarly, here also, item data. Item data. Item data. Okay, and here also, item data. Clear. And where are we going to store the result? We are going to store the result in item data dot reference number. Okay. Now you execute this once again, you will be able to. Okay. Sorry, guys. I forgot to expose these collections. Item data collection needs to be exposed. We are able to create the order. Now we are going to assign the data which is present in the item data collection. Now in this item data collection, we have the reference number also. You can see the reference number value is also available. Now we are going to add a empty row to this collection now we are going to move the data from this collection to this collection check this are we able to get the data here into this collection why did not assign the data one second Here. Oh, we did not update this. 
So we are supposed to allocate the data from each collection data, right? So here also we need to update it to item data. So to make our work easier, I have done this. Correct me if some mistake and if you are able to identify that mistake, me okay. So data, data is in item data allocate to this is a next stage and execute it once again. Here you can see the data here. Come back and see. Okay, now continue. The record will be marked completed. Now check the queue. So it is in locker status. Now if you refresh it, you can see the record is now completed. Okay. Likewise, when you continue, it will work on all the remaining records and it will update the data to the Excel. So while updating Excel file, what are we supposed to do? Which collection we are supposed to pass now? In collection, previously we are using product data collection. Instead of product data collection, we are supposed to pass data. Okay. I don't Sorry, no. This collection. I did not expose that collection also. A reference number collection. Exposing this collection and in this. Right to right collection. We are going to take the color. reference number data this is the collection which we are going to update so an example we have Uh, I'm not speaking anything right now. Uh, Bala, you said like your screen was stuck. Is it resolved? Are you able to see the screen now? I mean, is it happening for everyone? Guys, is it, uh, I mean, screen is getting lagged for everyone? Okay, I think. Uh, there is some network issue from my end. Okay. No problem, guys. We'll continue tomorrow. The remaining part. For now, I will share the recording. For now, I'll share the recording. I don't want to uh, because most of you are facing the same issue. Let me correct my uh, network also here because of these rains and all. I think there is some network issue from my end also. Let me correct it and then we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. So tomorrow we'll have one more hour extra. So tomorrow we'll uh, continuously have three hours in the afternoon session. Okay. So I'll make sure tomorrow we are not going to see any network issue, okay? From my end.